Over the last year, Drizzle has really blown up in popularity with almost everyone saying that it's going to completely replace Prisma as the go-to ORM inside of TypeScript and JavaScript. Now, I really love Prisma and have been using it for years, and I decided to try out Drizzle to see if it truly is something that can replace Prisma. And in this video, I wanna compare and contrast the two, figure out what Prisma does better and what Drizzle does better. And by the end of this video, I'll give you a list of exactly which thing each tool does better so you can determine which one is the best fit for your project. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And we're gonna be going over Prisma and Drizzle. Now, before we get started into the deep dive into the eight or nine different categories I wanna cover, I first wanna talk about in general what Drizzle and Prisma are. And essentially they are ORMs, which stands for Object Relational Mapping. Essentially, it's a tool that maps from your database to your actual code and makes it really easy for you to interact with your database for querying data, adding data, deleting data, updating data, everything you would want to do with your database. These tools are to make that easier for you to do by adding a layer of abstraction over top of your database. Now, the really great thing about both Drizzle and Prisma is that they will work with pretty much any type of database out there that's really common, whether it's a SQL or NoSQL database. They essentially have drivers that allow you to interact directly with those. If you look down here with Prisma, you can see there's a bunch of different options on how to get started with existing databases and Drizzle has an even wider range of things that you can use it with because if we scroll down over into this section, you'll see there's a bunch of information about how to get set up. And not only do you have like one option for Postgres, for example, but you can see there are tons of different options, eight, nine different options for Postgres. Same thing with MySQL, same thing with SQLite. So depending on what actual database driver you want to use under the hood, you can customize that really easily with Drizzle. While with Prisma, it's a little bit harder because it kind of uses Prisma behind the scenes as the driver, while Drizzle kind of gives you the option to use whatever you want. So in this regard, they both support essentially multiple different types of databases, but Drizzle gives you just a little bit more customization on exactly which parts you want to use and which driver you want to actually have powering it under the hood. Another thing that is very similar between the two is they both have a studio app. Essentially a studio app just allows you to actually access all the data in your database inside of this like admin panel where you can edit things, delete things, add things. It's a really great way to be able to test and interact with your database without having to create a bunch of admin pages. Both Prisma and Drizzle, they both have their own studio version. So if I just search here for a studio, we should see that I can get Prisma Studio and it shows me exactly how I can do things inside the Prisma Studio. They both work pretty much exactly the same. There are no differences there. Now, the final major similarity I wanna talk about before we start diving into some of the more code examples is going to be the fact that they both have a CLI. In Drizzle, this is called Drizzle Kit, and this is just a CLI that helps you automating things such as creating migrations from your schema, pushing to your database, pulling from your database, just keeping your database in sync with your actual code. Prisma has the exact same thing. There's no like specific name for it because it's just part of what Prisma is, but it allows you to actually interact with your database by pushing data, pulling data, running migrations, and so on. They're both very similar. I would say that Prisma's is quite a bit easier to use because everything's kind of built into it, but Drizzle, after you get the little bit of boilerplate code set up, it's pretty much the exact same workflow as Prisma. So they're both relatively easy to get going once you get them set up. Now, as we get ready to start diving into the code, I wanna talk about the differences in getting set up with Drizzle and Prisma because there's a major difference between the two in that Drizzle is much more difficult to get set up than Prisma, but that's because of the extra flexibility Drizzle gives you with how you actually use your database driver behind the scenes. So if we go to the you know, ORM here and we click on Postgres, for example, let's just say Postgres.js, you can see it gives me the exact documentation I need on actually getting set up with this. So you can see here, it gives me a file for how I can deal with migrations, how I can connect to my database, the different things I need to install. And for each one of the different drivers I use, it's going to be slightly different instructions on how to do each of these individual things. So unfortunately, it's a little bit tricky to get set up because you have to read the instructions on the exact driver that you're using, copy over all the code, make sure you have everything hooked up. And for me, it took a lot longer to get set up with Drizzle versus Prisma, but that could also be because I have a lot more experience with Prisma. Now, if we go ahead and we look at the actual code, we can compare the two side by side. With Prisma, to get started, it's super simple. Essentially, you install Prisma, and then you just run a command npx prisma init, and it creates everything for you, and you're essentially done. That's all you need to do. All you need to really do is just add the URL to your database, so almost no code at all. Now, when it comes to Drizzle, you don't really have a command that you can run that generates everything for you. Again, because of the extra flexibility you get, you have to choose what driver you want. So in my case, I'm choosing this Postgres.js driver. And what I need to do is make sure that I install Drizzle from there, get the migrate code from there. And then I need to make sure I set up my migration client here. And then I need to make sure I run all my different migration files. And this is just to actually handle migrating my database. So when I write code inside my schema, this is to make sure that when I apply those different schema changes, they go to my actual database. 
this is all automatically handled for you by Prisma with a single command for migrating your database. And that's because Prisma gives you less control. So they're able to actually give you more functionality because they take over more of that control. But once you get this file written, you never have to worry about it again, essentially. Another big difference is how you actually set up your configuration. Here you can see we have a drizzle config file, which contains all my information for the driver I wanna use, as well as all my different files where they're stored in my database credentials. This is very similar to this section inside your Prisma schema, essentially telling you what type of generator you wanna use and what type of data source you wanna use. So in our case, we're using Postgres and we're using this Prisma client.js. That's essentially the same thing that this is doing, but again, Drizzle gives you more customization, so it's a slightly larger file. But again, the differences between the two in that regard are not too big. Really, the big difference is getting migrations and stuff working. Once you get that set up the first time though and copy over the code, it's really not that big of a deal. So specifically in the category of setup, I would say that Prisma has the edge here, but it's really not that big of a deal because the setup process is not super long or difficult. Now, the one place where Prisma does have a huge edge, at least in my opinion, is when it comes to defining your schemas. So the important thing about ORMs is you're able to define your schemas inside of your actual code. So here you can see on the right hand side, I have my schema inside of Prisma. As you can see, we have this model name as well as all the different things inside the model. And you can see that this code is very easy to read. It's relatively simple to understand. If I just make this a little bit wider, you can see certain things like setting up database relations and so on. It's really not that hard. And you can see this code is you know, not that long. It's relatively short, pretty straightforward and relatively easy to read and reason with because it's just relatively straightforward. It's their own custom Prisma schema language. As you can see, the file is called schema.prisma. It's their own custom language. While we look over here at the version that is going to be dealing with specifically Drizzle, and you'll notice here that it's all using normal TypeScript code. So they don't have any custom language, which could be a pro in your case if you don't like dealing with custom languages. But as you'll see, things are much more verbose on how you actually write every single thing out. Depending on your preferences, this could be a pro or a con, but in the cases here, it's going to be a lot more code that you need to write in order to get set up with an actual database model. And in my opinion, I prefer the syntax of Prisma and the ease of use and the actual customization and flexibility I get with Prisma, while it's less than I get inside a Drizzle in this case, I find that the actual creation of your schema and models is really pretty similar for customization and the actual syntax is so much nicer inside of Prisma. But as you can see, as I write all this out, everything is doing the exact same stuff. I mean, these schemas are exactly the same between the two, but as you can see, the code is quite a bit longer in this section. Another major difference with Prisma and Drizzle is that if you want to deal with relations inside of your actual queries, so if you want to do a query where you're like, okay, you know what, I want to get my database dot users and I want to find many of them and I want to specifically get all the different products that the users have selected as well. Like I wanna get all the names of the products that the user has done. Well, inside of Prisma, all this is automatically set up for you. For example, here I have all the orders for every single one of my users. It's one single line inside of Prisma. But that's not quite this case inside of Drizzle. In my case, I need to add extra code to specify each one of these relations that I wanna use inside my query builder. All of this code down here has nothing to do with my actual database schema. This is just to actually make it so that I can do my queries properly for those more easy to use queries that deal with like get all the products for the user, get all the orders for the user and so on. I still need to specify all of my different foreign key relations up here. And then down here, I set up those relations while inside of Prisma, it's more all in one kind of handle all is one type of scenario. Again, it's not a major deal. It's just slightly more code that you need to write. But again, it's a little bit more headache when you're doing the setup and there's just a little bit more boilerplate involved with Drizzle when you compare it to Prisma. Now, the next thing I wanna talk Talk about is how you actually query data inside of Drizzle and Prisma because this is another place where there are massive differences where there are huge pros for both Prisma and Drizzle and huge cons in both as well. So the very first thing I want to show you is just a relatively basic select query or an insert query sorry. So as you can see here on the left hand side I have an insert query for Drizzle and on the right hand side I have an insert query for Prisma. As you can see, these are both very basic insert queries where all I'm doing is just inserting about five different rows of data or five different columns worth of data to create a brand new product. And as you can see, the code for both of these is almost identical. Obviously the syntax is different, but the code is almost exactly the same between the two. So when it comes to simple inserts and deletes and so on, Drizzle and Prisma have almost no differences. So in that case, they're both pretty much the same. But as soon as you get to slightly more complex things, then you can start to see the big differences between the two. If we move over to this next example, this is going to be for creating a discount code. And the biggest difference between these two is that instead of just adding a few rows of data, we also have to deal with database connections between multiple tables. So in our case, on the Drizzle side, you can see this first section of code is all about creating a brand new discount code. 
And then this second bit of code down here is about creating the actual connection between a discount code and the products that it's valid for. So I create a brand new discount code, and then I create a bunch of different joining tables, essentially. I need to create rows in that join table to say, okay, for each one of my product IDs, I need to say that this discount code is valid for that product ID. So it's a little bit of extra code, as you can see, to write out all of this information. Now on the right hand side, you can see we have the version for Prisma and I can do all of this inside of one single function call. And you can see here, I can just add this product section and I can say, you know what? I wanna connect my product IDs to this particular discount code. So it's really easy to do like one to many, many to many or many to one relationships when you're doing inserts, updates, deletes, and so on. That's one thing that I really love about Prisma. But as you can see, the amount of code you write is not drastically different between the two. You just have to write a little bit of extra code in Drizzle if you're dealing with these types of specific scenarios. Now, again, if you're doing something basic like a delete function, you can see the code for those two is pretty much exactly the same between Drizzle and Prisma. It's just slightly different syntax. Now, when it comes to actually querying data, this is again where you get quite a bit of big differences. So if I come over here and I look at how the actual orders are being queried on my page, you can see I have this db.query inside of Drizzle, which is one of the ways you can query data. And this is kind of like the Prisma style of querying data, where it's a little bit easier to write and to reason with. As you can see, while the code is slightly different between the two, it's very similar. You can see in this one, I have a select where I'm selecting my ID price paid, as well as these join tables for discount code product user. Same thing here, ID price paid, and then I'm getting those three different tables and finally doing an order by at the end. As you can see, the code pretty much maps one to one between these two. It's very simple and easy to see how they work between these two. And this is because I'm using this fancy query version inside of Drizzle, which again, works very similar to something like Prisma, just not quite as powerful as Prisma's version. And that's because on top of this simple query syntax, you also have the ability to essentially write custom database queries using Drizzle, while with Prisma, you don't really have that option. So if I look at this code, you can see over in Prisma, I have this aggregate function that I can use to try to get things like a sum and a count function. While inside of Drizzle, I don't have that functionality. So instead I just need to write my own custom SQL code. But the nice thing about this is I get all of the type safety I would get with normal SQL code. As you can see, I can come through here. I can get like counts for this different data, counts up here, sums, and so on all the information that I would want to get, I can get inside of these custom queries and I can take this as far as I want. For example, I could add in some where syntax, I could do group buys, I could do joins inside of here, I can do like a having statement, literally anything you can do in SQL, you can pretty much do in Drizzle and all of it's going to be type safe, which is really nice. This is very different than Prisma in that you can only do the things Prisma allows you to do. If Prisma doesn't allow you to do something, for example, here, I need to actually divide my amount by 100 outside my query. Well, if I wanted, I could come in here and put that directly inside of my database query itself. So there's quite a bit of differences there where Prisma is a little bit more restricted on what you can actually run, while Drizzle gives you the flexibility to just write essentially custom SQL while still retaining the full type safety you would want. Now inside of Prisma, I could execute raw SQL queries, but I don't get any type safety when I do that. While with Drizzle, the fact that you can generate SQL queries from their actual API makes it so you get that type safety. So for this particular case, it's really hard for me to say which one wins. Drizzle wins in the case that it is much more flexible in what you can actually write out, but when it comes to ease of writing out queries, especially relatively simple queries, Prisma wins out in that case because it makes doing things like joins pretty much automatic for you. You don't even have to think about it. More complex insert statements are also really easy, but as soon as you get to some more advanced stuff, it becomes a lot harder to write out inside of Prisma. Now, throughout this entire video, I've been talking a lot about type safety, and this is one thing that both of these libraries do incredibly well, so I'd say it's pretty much a tie on this one. They both have full TypeScript type safety, which I absolutely love. The big difference between the two is since your schema inside of Drizzle is defined inside of TypeScript, essentially all the code for this schema is used for creating your type safety generation and such. While in Prisma, you have this separate schema file that needs to be parsed. So in Prisma, what happens is they take this schema and they generate types from that schema. While in Drizzle, they just use the actual types from this file right here for your type safety. They both give you the same amount of type safety, but you may have a little bit of troubleshooting in schema where you need to restart your TypeScript server if you make changes inside of this schema file just to make sure that they propagate through your entire application. But really, they have essentially the same level of type safety. Now, the next important thing to talk about when it comes to Drizzle and Prisma, which is kind of the big reason a lot of people moved over to Drizzle, is performance and speed. 
I'm gonna bring over these benchmarks that are from Drizzle's website. And the fact they come from Drizzle's website, I would take them with a grain of salt because obviously they're going to be biased towards Drizzle since they want the benchmarks to make their tool look as good as possible. But from everyone I've talked to and myself included, using Drizzle has always been essentially faster than using Prisma. As you can see here in these benchmarks, I mean, a lot of the times it's drastically faster in certain cases here. The reason for this speed increase is that Drizzle is a lot thinner of a layer over top of your actual database, while Prisma incorporates a lot more into it. So Drizzle is automatically going to be faster in that regard. And another reason Drizzle is faster is it was actually built with speed kind of as the first thing in mind. So they really focused on speed and performance over Prisma, which is focusing a lot on ease of use. Now Prisma has made a lot of changes over the last year, especially with Drizzle coming out to try to increase their speed and they definitely have improved on the speed front. But if you're really caring about raw speed, Drizzle is probably going to be the better option. And one of the big reasons for that is that Drizzle is able to take all of your different queries and database stuff that you're running and it's going to just send one single database query to your database. Prisma has to do a bunch of processing inside of its own Prisma engine to make everything work. And then it will send a bunch of different queries to your database. It may send one, it may send 10, it may send 100, depending on how you actually wrote out your code and depending on how the Prisma generator parses all that information. So you're not really sure how much data is being sent to and requested from your database. You're not sure how many queries are going. And you have this like extra step of processing that takes a lot longer than in the case of Drizzle, where it's a little bit more direct to the database and back to you. Another big difference in speed is serverless versus not serverless. So one of the huge problems that people ran into with Prisma is that if you're working in like a serverless style environment, the cold start, essentially the first time you try to hit and access that database, is going to be very slow for people, which is a huge problem in serverless, while Drizzle is much, much faster faster at that cold start scenario. Now Prisma is working on fixing this. They even have this thing called Prisma Accelerate, which I believe is supposed to try to really address some of those problems. I haven't used it myself, but it's relatively new and something I think they're using to try to help increase the speed of Prisma in that serverless style environment. So it's something they're working on, but again, it was what Drizzle was developed for and designed with in the first place. So it's almost always going to be faster than Prisma because it was designed that way to begin with. Now, the last category I wanna talk about is going to be documentation. This is a huge thing. If you're going to be writing out your code, you wanna have really good and thorough documentation. And I can safely say that both Drizzle and Prisma have a really good documentation. Now Drizzle's documentation is much newer and Drizzle is just a newer tool in general. As you can see, it's version 0.2.8 at the time I'm recording this video versus Prisma, which is version 5.1. So as you can see, Drizzle is much newer, which means things change faster and there's less thorough documentation. But overall, going through the documentation inside of Drizzle, it's actually very thorough and covers pretty much everything I could ask for it to cover. So it was really easy for me to get up and started by running and reading through the documentation. With that said though, I do think Prisma has better documentation, especially when it comes to like getting started. The Drizzle getting started documentation is kind of iffy, but the actual more thorough documentation is a lot better. So when it comes to just like first getting started, I think Prisma has really, really good documentation on that. But if I had to choose a winner, I would say Prisma is the winner in this scenario. But in the future, a year down the road from now, this may be completely different. They may be at an even playing field as Drizzle is able to catch up. So in the end, should you be choosing Prisma or should you be choosing Drizzle? Now you can choose either one and you're probably going to be just fine. Your project's going to work great, but depending on your type of project, one may be better than the other. Drizzle is really great if you want extra flexibility. The fact that you can essentially write raw SQL queries, but keep that type safety is really powerful. And it just gives you a lot more flexibility on what you query for, what you insert and what you do in that database. Now, the problem with that flexibility is it requires you to write extra code, more boilerplate, and just in general, it's more cumbersome and difficult to work with, especially as you start to get to more and more complex things. But again, with Prisma, you maybe can't even do those more complex things very easily or even at all. So Drizzle, while it's more complicated and difficult to get started with, it gives you more flexibility in how you handle things and a little bit less magic. So I would say if you need that flexibility, go towards Drizzle. But if all you care about is how easy something is to get up and started with, Prisma may be a great option. Now, if you're planning on going the serverless route, Drizzle is probably going to be the best bet for you just because it was designed with the serverless idea in mind, and it's got a really great performance package compared to Prisma, which especially when it comes to serverless is just not ideal in the performance aspect. So again, if performance or serverless is a big deal for you, go with Drizzle. Otherwise, Prisma may be a great option. Lastly, we need to talk about ease of use. If you're not very confident or familiar with SQL, you're probably going to really struggle with Drizzle because it requires you to write out raw SQL. I mean, you need to know what left joins, inner joins, full joins, right joins, and all of that kind of entails 
because you're writing raw join SQL queries, while in Prisma, everything is handled by the Prisma ORM, which extracts away a lot of that information. While with Drizzle, any type of query that you have that is more complicated than just a simple select query is essentially going to be just a SQL query, but using JavaScript syntax. So you really need to have a good grasp of SQL. Otherwise, Prisma is definitely going to be the better option for you. And if you're just not super confident with backend development or stuff like that yet, I would really go with Prisma as a more beginner friendly tool, while Drizzle is a little bit more of an advanced tool that if you have the extra skills in SQL can be a way that you can supercharge your backend by using Drizzle for a little bit of increased speed and flexibility and customization. In the end, there's really no right answer on which one you choose. And I know for myself, I'll probably be using both of them in projects going forward, depending on what my different needs are and how easy I want the project to be to set up. Now, with that said, I have a full crash course covering everything you need to know about Prisma. I'll have that linked right over here. And I'm going to be working on a Drizzle crash course as well, which will be linked right over here as soon as I'm done with it. So with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.